boys. We're at a brand new restaurant, Gecko Miami. It's Dave Grutman's new restaurant with Bad Bunny. It's actually opening tonight, so it's pretty crazy. We're gonna do the pod here. We got the Board Ape founders coming, and it's pretty crazy because we just launched the Board Ape flavor of Happy Dad as well. And uh, we also have the merch on fullsend.com. The Board Ape shit. Also, I know there's fucking hella crypto whales right now watching a lot of people into crypto. So shout out to Stake. Stake is the best online crypto casino. I use Stake all the time when I'm back home in Canada with my boys and shit. There's also Stake US now. So if you're in US, check that out. But yeah, shout out to Stake. Always place your bets on Stake, boys. The best luck. We got the boys pulling up right now. Let's get into it. This is very surreal. Should we? Who's I know it's cool, right? It's amazing. What do you guys? Th did you guys just see yeah, it on Twitter camera, recently? No. Yeah, 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 we've seen it. Like well, I think the, Elon, uh... we're rolling too. You can oh, just okay. yeah. Okay. We just we just go for it. All right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Do you you guys you guys saw it on Twitter? Yeah, we yeah. saw it on the when you guys were talking to Elon. Somebody like sent it to us. They're like, "Yo, do you know about this?" And yeah. No. Yeah, cool. Well, this is. Uh, we really appreciate you guys coming through. We got the the founders of the Board Ape Yacht Club, Gordon, Greg. Greg, Gargamel, Gargamel, whatever. Yeah. yeah, all good. Yeah. Either one. No, I think this is like a really cool one for us too because obviously we love the NFT space too. And just like to see what you guys have done over the last few years is like, it's crazy. Man. Thank you. Yeah, it's insane. Year and a half. Year and a half. It's not, not even, not even, not even a few, right? Yeah, exactly. Crazy. You guys don't do a lot of like sit downs and stuff too, right? This is actually, I would say, our first. We did an interview with Input Magazine. That was kind of like our first big interview in person um, a couple weeks ago. We recently did a podcast that hasn't aired yet. It'll be on NPR. But this is like our first, I think, legitimately like you know, sit down podcast. Thing, yeah. this, wow. one's gonna, this one's going to be big too. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. You guys yeah. are killing it lately. Yeah, like, I know. We just, I was looking up like who your last couple of people were and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, guys are that your level. content come up on TikTok. Like ultimately, it's like my like nightly routine is to go on TikTok and you guys have like been crushing it. Yeah. Do a lot of people ask you to do interviews and you guys don't want to do them? Or? Yeah, we get asked a lot, uh, especially lately. But uh, yeah, for the longest time, I mean, we just, I don't know. We're like usually pretty private guys and like, I don't know, we've been doing this for just a year and a half, like 14 hours a day, every day, just like focused on the business. And so it's hard to be like, oh, you know, let's put aside time to just like go out and do press or talk to people yeah. and all that. Also know. like kind of like a socially anxious person to some degree. Like it's funny, like you put me in a crowd of people. I'm like totally normal. I could be the life of the party, but like something like this, I'm like, Ugh. yeah. yeah. Well, guy, guy, um, guy Osiri, who, yeah. who yeah. he reached out to us about this and yeah. Um, he he always tells me that how focused you guys are, right? Like, cause I yeah. cause I asked a few months ago, I was like, hey, like, would love to meet them. Not even not even for the podcast. Would just love to sit down with you guys. And guys, like, dude, these guys are so laser focused. Like, you'll see. Like, I can't tell you, but you'll see what they come out with. Then ApeCoin came out. Other side came out. The you know the um, crypto punks. You know, so I was like, oh shit. Okay, now I get like these guys are really building something special. Yeah, for a long time it was like the motto was like actions speak louder than words, and it was like you know. There wasn't a lot of um, people in the NFT space who were really sticking it out past like the fact, past the point where they made a few million or whatever it was, and it was just like we wanted to be the, known as the founders who worked our asses off, and that's yeah. what we did. It's inspiring, it's awesome. Yeah, it's it's really inspiring to us because same thing with uh, with our product. You know, we uh, we minted ten thousand uh, back in January. Um, something like nine thousand of the ten thousand have been held for over ninety days, and uh, people don't sell. There's only actually less than. 90 listed out of the 10,000 that were minted. Same. What's with the drill, too? <laughs> yeah. The drill. Well, the, the restaurant's opening tonight. Guys, we have the Board 8 founders, not Lazy Lions. <laughs> yeah. Make sure everyone knows that. You guys, you guys want to try one of these? Yeah, I'd love yeah, to. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. John, you want to pass two of them? How long have you guys known each other? Uh, like 10 years. 10, something 11 like years, something like that. Yeah. And when did you guys get started on working on this whole project? I want to say, too, before we get into that, I think there's going to be a lot of like hardcore NFT like people listening to this too, but there's also going to be a lot of casual people. So I just want to let the audience know too, we're going to kind of ask some questions for everybody too. We do, we, yeah. I mean, we did that with Elon. I mean, there's a reason why Elon's episode was three hours long. People are like, well, I can't believe you didn't ask about this specific galaxy and all this. I was like, dude, we were just like, we're just chatting with one we're of the just boys. Learning, like, yeah. We're, yeah, we were asking random stuff. That Elon episode, I'll be honest, could have, if we didn't drink so much, it could have been a five-hour episode. We were at the end, including him. We're like, all I right, think Elon like, was getting too tanked. Yeah, yeah <laughs> like we were all like, okay, if it weren't for drinking, like that would have been a five-hour episode because we yeah. just like to talk about everything. Nothing yeah. specific. There's like an endless amount of topics with that guy. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. you can go from everything from like, is the world a simulation to just like, are aliens real? You know? Yeah. Or it's yeah. like, you know, cars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, what else? What were some like random things we talked about too? There was a. Like, his house parties, house like parties, yeah, mushrooms, everything you think. Right. Has he done mushrooms? Gaming too. Oh yeah, oh, he yeah. has to. Yeah. I don't know if he admitted to it. Okay, but he has to. Nice, for nice. Sure. 
So, yeah. But he was, he's pro mushrooms. Yeah, he's pro. Right. Pro, pro, yeah. pro, pro, pro psychedelics. You might yeah, be how did how did this all like kind of start? Like, how did you two meet each other? I'm so interested yeah. in just this whole story. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we met in Miami. We both grew up in Miami, but we didn't actually meet while we were living here. We met like on spring break. I was doing my undergrad in New York. He was in Chicago. Uh, turns out we had mutual friends that like we each knew since the time we were like what, 15. How or many years ago is this? This was like uh, 10 years ago okay. that we met. And um, yeah, just at like some shitty bar in South Miami that like our mutual friends would go to. And we like, I don't know, we just started talking and we just got in a fight about books, basically. Like I was studying writing. He was too. You know, he's got like fucking Kurt Vonnegut's face tattooed on his arm. So like clearly... He's a novelist that we both liked. There at the was time. this like book that I was obsessed with at the time called Infinite Jest by a guy named David Foster Wallace, which is like a thousand pages and is like kind of cringy if you're like of a certain age and you're a man and you're like, that's my favorite book. And I immediately was like, you, oh, have you read that? And he's like, that guy sucks. And like that was basically. <laughs> yeah, we just we like started, started fighting. Yeah. And then that was like the, the genesis of everything. It was like oh. became like a sparring partner for ideas and creative stuff over the years, just like texting about like, oh, what do you think about this or this short story? I'm working on this project. And then. You know, it's just somebody that you could be very frank with about like, that's a piece of shit, but maybe do this instead and whatever. And then it was just like a productive, creative relationship in that way. And then the we became even closer friends through MMORPGs. Have you guys ever played any of those, like World of Warcraft or anything yeah. like that back in the day? I played uh, Reign of Chaos. Reign of Chaos, okay. Did you play that? No, before? I don't know that one. Nice. Was I it like after, after World of Warcraft? For no, that was before. It was before, really? But it was like, have you, have you played Diablo? Yeah. It's like... When Diablo got hot. Gotcha. Okay. We played some of the early MMORGC. I think you were a big EverQuest fan. I played a game called Star Wars Galaxies. Is RuneScape considered that or no? RuneScape is definitely like OG RuneScape okay. for sure. I yeah. ran RuneScape back in the day. Yeah. I got a lot of the people in our club actually are like old school oh, really? RuneScape fans. Yeah. It makes sense. Like people yeah. who get into How about NFTs. Maple Story. I remember <laughs> Maple Story. It was amazing. Maple Story yeah. was lit. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. But yeah. About so how long ago ago was this? Well, I mean, so if we met 11 years ago, we we played like on like we played like World of Warcraft together as, as, as like soon as like a few years ago. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. definitely like, you know, like, like adults, late you know? 20s, like, like not cool, like, you know, <laughs> just like, yeah, just nerding out. Um, and then from there, you were the f first person to introduce me to crypto. Like 2017. And you had already been exposed to it, I think, in 2015? Uh, I knew about it since like college since like 2009 but that's how it works with crypto is like the first time you hear about it you're like no i don't yeah. get it or this seems weird and then like fast forward five years later and and it's at like 100x what it was and you're like oh i, I should have paid attention yep. or something right because like know. the person who first told you about it like is now rich yeah. and yeah. you're the idiot who didn't listen i don't think you guys did this by design it just happened with like musicians and artists and celebrities like picking it up i know moonpay was a lot behind it as well but which is a good thing like i think moonpay's really been aggressive with like making it mainstream but like it was your guys's projects that really put nfts and got guys like me to actually pay attention i think the ip piece of the puzzle was the thing that took it to the next level we weren't the first project to uh, give away a, a license to the board apes to nft holders but um, I think we were the first project to do it with IP that actually felt like, you know, that you would want to utilize for products and branding or TV shows or whatever mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. Um, that was the thing that, like, I think really captured the attention because when we put this out, we had no idea it would become this big, obviously. Um, we had sort of, you know, an idea of, like, utility in mind and sort of dreams, and we kind of made the scaffolding there. So it was like, okay, maybe this could be like a Web3 Supreme or maybe this could be, you know, something larger than life. But at the, at the same time... Um, watching what occurred uh was like unbelievable right like within a week people were creating derivatives of their board apes and like having artists commission them and people were already figuring out ways mm -hmm. to like you know uh monetize the intellectual property which was incredible Crazy. yeah how did, they, I mean, so how, did, how did that yeah going back to that story so after that yeah world of warcraft wait 2017 that's pretty recent too for to get into <laughs> crypto right yeah uh, relatively it was, yeah it was i think that was a you know that was a big moment a lot of people were getting into it and we just, I, you know, I threw like a thousand dollars into like five different things. But that, what was interesting then, I feel, I feel like that that hadn't existed at least not for me previously knowing about crypto was like, you just got into these communities on Twitter and you would just, you could read about twenty different cryptocurrencies all day and just feel like you were scratching like the surface. Oh, yeah. It just felt like there was this whole world of possibility opening up, and like you just wanted to know more. It was like this attention economy that was going on, and. Uh, I don't know, like, and also it was just like a magical moment where like, yeah, we bought in at, what, ETH at like 300 bucks and then went to like 1400 in like four months. And it was just like, this is crazy what is happening here. And um, 
then it, the bear market hit and it, things got quiet, but like, it just felt like something that we always wanted to kind of pay attention to. And, and, but we were non technical people. So it was like, how do we like participate in this as like creatives or storytellers and that kind of thing? Yeah. Like we were, we were like really obsessed a little bit with uh, crypto Twitter and like the personalities that would be on there. And like, there was something really endearing about some of these guys or, or girls is like, they, you know, you could basically cryptographically verify that the person behind like that cat picture was worth, you know, maybe a hundred million dollars in crypto or something. And, you know, instead of like fucking off to the South of France, like most people in their twenties would, if they made that much money very quickly, they were just like up at 2 AM being like, who wants to play league? You know, mm. like I'm bored. And that was like very odd to us. It was like, uh, I don't know, just interesting. I love That's crypto crazy. Twitter. Yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah, like, like the like, memes are just, yeah. It's all amazing. about the memes. Yeah. Crypto Twitter is good. A little bit better than political Twitter. Oh, yeah. Like, the deeper, and the deeper you get into it, the more inside baseball it gets. It just becomes, like, hilarious. Yeah. You know? So, were yeah. you guys just buying coins together, like, investing? He was more of, like, a long-term investor. I tried to, I kind of took, like, a fish to water with, like, uh, trading and technical analysis, which I was, like, moderately okay with because I had some experience with that in penny stocks when I was in college. Mm -hmm. But, um, and, uh, yeah, we kind of just rove that first wave, 2017, which was our first wave, all the way up and all the way down, basically. Um, and then... Kind of just kept Twitter and the uh, crypto in the back of our heads because we were like, you know, we can't contribute to this as tech guys because that's not really what we are. We can't contribute to this really meaningfully as traders or investors because we're not that good at it. Um, but culture hadn't really come to Ethereum. We'd been exposed to NFTs very early on in 2017 by via CryptoPunks and a project called CryptoKitties. And I remember that was my first NFT was a CryptoKitty. Um, but it didn't seem to like really... Um, capture the attention beyond that bull cycle, you know, because it didn't like the, it felt a little dilutive. It wasn't there. It kind of had like the, the feeling of an NFT blockchain game, but not really. It wasn't like fully fleshed out yet. They were, but both those projects were like pioneers, um, particularly CryptoPunks, which were like the first truly generative um, profile picture project. Did, did you buy it as an investment or just to like get no, into No, I mean, space? I bought it at the, at the time. I did not even consider it as an investment. I bought it thinking like, oh, maybe I can do something with this. Maybe it's fun. Yeah. And it was for a little bit. And then it kind of like, you know, the attention kind of died out. That was in 2017. That was in 2017, yeah. Wow. yeah. Damn. How did yeah. you even hear of them then? I think Everybody, through crypto yeah. Twitter. It was like, that was just a, like a moment in time. It was just a flash in the pan on crypto Twitter where everyone was just buying crypto kitties one day. And you're just like, okay. They're just like these digital wow. cats that you could like breed and get more cats. And like, you know, it's so popular that like it was clogging up the Ethereum network that day. Like you couldn't get another transaction through some days because like everyone was just like breeding cats on the internet. And it was like, what is happening? Like <laughs> That's crazy. Um, yeah. At the same time that like the scarcity model for it wasn't really there. Like, it's not like, you know, when you think about Bored Apes, something like that, there's 10,000 where it's like, with crypto kitties, it was just like, okay, these cats are just multiplying and like the value of the one before it isn't there anymore because there's, you know, right. 100,000 of them or whatever it is. Right. And now fast forward to now, you you guys bought CryptoPunks. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's pretty yeah. it's pretty wild. And I so, think what you guys, oh. Sorry. I was going to say, what, what, like, when did you guys decide to make your project? So early 2021, you know, in, in late 2020, uh, Crypto was started to be like more of a thing again in the in the mainstream, you know, public. Um, and by f January, kind of 2021, a project called Hashmask came out that caught our attention. It caught everybody's attention on crypto Twitter, basically, because it was like a it was like an art project that was getting published on Ethereum is what it was. It was like an NFT project that wasn't like a technical thing like CryptoKitties was. It wasn't like this weird generative thing like CryptoPunks was. It was just like a new medium for people to publish on. In the same way, it's like when podcasting opened up or like, you know, YouTube creators or anything else, it's like, holy shit, here's this new place to like put content out that you don't have to be like the most technically savvy person in the world to do it. Right. Like, and if you understand the medium and all that, like, that's like a moment in time. And so we just, um, you know, I saw Hash Mass and literally I texted him like, hey, let's make an NFT. And he, you know, was like immediately like, let's fucking go. And, and I think the next day I sent like a, a legal zoom, you know, incorporate, you know, I made an LLC as a way of like, okay, this isn't going to just be like a COVID side project that we don't follow in on. I'm like kind of burning the ships. Like this is going to be a pain in the ass to wind down because I'm like incorporating and all this crap for it. Anyway. Damn. Did you guys own a bunch of others up to that point? Like since your crypto kitty, were you no. continuously buying or? No. 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 So what was the first move you made when you like said, let's start a project? Like how did the, the name come about and how did the art come about? That was like a, period of time where we're bouncing around a lot of ideas, none of which were very good. And then there was this like three in the morning. I remember 
or it was like around midnight and I like messaged Gargan. I'm like, I, I have, we'd, we'd eventually come, no, let me back up a bit. We'd eventually come to a point where we thought the market was starting to dry up and die out in NFTs. And it actually was, it was entering into like a little bear market for a minute. We we're like, oh gosh, it used to be that like for a period of time there, you could put up any picture on the internet essentially and, you know, attach it to Ethereum and it was going to sell. But suddenly projects weren't selling out. We started to think, okay, well, we need to attach some utility to this. We need to start thinking more broadly and what we can do with this technology. Um, and we had this idea for like, um, a very high flute and art board idea where it was like, okay, if you own an NFT and we were imagining that these were going to be like Moreau or Mondrian-esque, you know, like paintings, uh, if you owned one of them, you would have access to a, a, a drawing board where you could drop a pixel like every five minutes or something like that. And we we're like, oh, and people create collaborative art and it'll be beautiful and whatever. Uh, and then that night that we had the idea or a little bit after the idea, I'm, I call um, an old friend of mine, uh, Nicole Muniz, who ended up becoming our CEO later. Um, someone I've known since I was 15 years old. And I was telling her the idea and she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're kind of an idiot because like the very first thing that someone's going to draw on this pixel board is going to be a dick. <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah. And that ended up being true, by the way, that the very first thing drawn on the pixel board was indeed a dick. And we we're like, oh, this is not like a high flute and high art, you know, fancy thing, which also the internet. Wasn't, yeah. it was the internet, right? And so we we're like, okay, what is this then? And we we're like, where would someone draw a dick? And we were like, oh, it's like a dive bar bathroom wall that's where you draw a dick. And then so we started thinking about like the places we'd grown up here in Miami and then it kind of like sprawled from there from thinking about, well, okay, if we're going to make something, let's not make something inauthentic to ourselves. Let's make something like a place that we're going to go. And then it, kind of the club model formed around that. And it was late at night. It was like midnight and I messaged you. I'm like, I'm going to write you an essay um, with a crazy idea. And in that had the words Board Ape Yacht Club and had a bunch of like imagery of like CBGBs and Andy Warhol's factory and just like you know, an aesthetic that felt really cool and interesting to us from like 1969 New York. And it just felt like um, the kind of club that we would want to be a part of. And from there, like, we just tried to make it more like ourselves. You know, we like, at first, the idea for the yacht club, the exterior of the image had, um, was like, you know, a decrepit, like Bayside Miami kind of old yacht club. And then eventually we thought it was even cooler to put it in the Everglades and like make it ramshackle and secret, like this, like, you know, special place that you'd have to find. And then Bored Apes, of course, came from the idea of these like crypto Twitter personalities who to us seemed like Bored Apes. To ape into crypto or in trading communities, you can even see how popular it is just from like, I think it's AMC is now doing their own like stock that's like ape. Uh, that's going to be the ticker symbol. It just means to like not do your due diligence in, uh, and just go hard into, you know, some kind of asset. You mm -hmm. know, it's like go ape shit essentially. Um, how it's do like you... the full send thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. True, it is, yeah. right? Well, collab. Well, I guess we have I a guess, yeah, we <laughs> This is great, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I normally don't like banana flavored things, but this is actually sick. That's the thing. We we like we didn't want it to be a gimmick too. Like yeah. once we tasted banana, then we're like, all right, we're doing this. Yeah, it like, was good. Yeah. It was good by accident. Yeah. Like, great. You know, it was supposed to be, you know, let's just put the ape on a box. I I'll be honest, guy gave me the idea. You know, um oh, nice. we bought we bought, I think it was back in um November, December. We all we bought apes and then then we, uh, Happy Dad, the LC, bought an ape, and, um, and we just bought it. Like, we just bought it, and I sent it to the guy. I was like, hey, Happy Dad also bought an ape. And he's like, well, you should make a drink out of it or throw it. Or he just said put it on one of your cans. And then that's when the idea just went, all right, well, what if we did a specific flavor? It takes a while. It takes like yeah, six months sure. to yeah. come up with new flavors and cans and all this stuff and then distributors and then licenses, all that so the idea started back in December, and then just to, it's actually ironic we're with you guys today. Today it just came out. It's incredible, congrats, um, guys! This we is did like, literally today, like it's, yeah, we did ten thousand cases only, and now it's like so they're already. 000. I mean, they're already okay. gone. They're going to be collectors' items. Then. Yeah, they're going to be yeah. collector items. They're, they're go. gone, but I think we're going to make it a permanent flip flavor eventually because everyone yeah. likes it. Like, yeah. I mean, you. I mean, we. I mean, we got two legends here. <laughs> One thing, Kyle, uh, myself, Steve, and my brother think of sometimes like, all right, we have access to gas stations, convenience stores grocery stores what else can we do do we do another liquor no this is crushing it let's focus on this so then we're like what else do people buy at gas stations and it's a beef jerky so Amazing. we have Amazing. so Amazing. so we bought four more this guy's an original one it's sergeant pepper is pepper flavor amazing this guy with the bloodshot red eyes is spicy perfect a little too spicy <laughs> for him and then we got teriyaki so you know, this is a new product that we have that's going to come out the end of this year. And going back to, you know, we want to take these products. We're going to do something with our NFT holders that 
can't really get into it yet because of details, but mm -hmm. something where our NFT holders will be a big part of this. And you guys are going to do great just based on how popular you guys are and how awesome you guys are making the products, obviously. But what's so cool about like the intellectual property of Board Apes in particular is like I, we've seen people who had no following essentially utilize the commercial license mm -hmm. to great success because there's this cool feedback loop that's happening in Web3 where like there was this like um, – fast food franchise that started in LA called Bored and Hungry, right? It's crushing yeah. it, right? And it was Long like, the, but like on opening day, lines around the block because all of Web3 wanted to support it, right? So like all these NFT people, all these crypto people were just like, yeah, let's try it. And it ended up being a great burger. And so they're going to be super successful, yeah. I think. I heard he's opening up more. Yeah, that's what Andy, I heard too. Andy, yeah. shout out. This is my yeah. buddy Andy. I'm proud of him. Um, you guys did meetups too, didn't you? In New York? And we, so we've done two ape fests. Um, what do those look like? Well, the first one was kind of like we just pieced it together with guys help a lot, by the way. Yeah, in like two uh, months and we like, just like figured it out. Figured it out. We had like a thousand person or two thousand person yacht uh, in, in New Manhattan, York City. In New York yeah. City. Two thousand had, person? Yeah. Or something. Oh. Was it a thousand or two thousand? I think it was a sorry, I don't I, know. I, I honestly it's don't know. It's been like it's been a, almost it's been a, a year, year since that. And then we had a, a big venue, we had a community meetup space. It was it was a lot. And you know, we had like strokes and little baby played and it was pretty wild. Oh yeah. But that for like, like you know, especially considering like the project I don't even think was a year old that time. And of course no, it was like five months old. Five months old. Greg wow. and I had the no experience running events whatsoever. Yeah, so obviously yeah, yeah, we relied yeah. a lot on guys' expertise then. Um but still, you know, one of our co-founders, Sass, was also someone who, like, you know, was just figuring out how to run major events for the first time. Yeah, he was and just, we just a software engineer that got so, thrown yeah, into yeah, this. Yeah, crazy, crazy. All right, let's go. It's and this was the longest time we were, like, in January we still, we were 11 people. Like, now you guys 75. Like, we're scaling this up January? like crazy. But yeah, yeah. yeah. You were 11? Yeah. 11 people. Wow. Yeah. yeah. How many on the initial launch of the project? Four. Four? Just the four co-founders. Tomato, Garga, myself, and Sass. Yeah. And what were, like, the different roles upon, like launching or like to get to launch Krem and Zishan tomato and sass they came from uh as in as software engineers and there's actually kind of a funny story for that yeah because basically the story was when you know all right I, I contacted gordon to like hey let's do this we've been in crypto together since 2017 like we both understood the opportunity um but obviously we needed technical help to get this thing done and so it's, you know the strategy wasn't much more sophisticated than me being like oh i think like javascript's important here and uh, I call Karem Tomato and I'm like, oh, do you know any JavaScript? And he's like, yeah, it's like 90% of my job. And I'm like, perfect, look at this. Let's figure out how to make like something on the blockchain together. And he texts me back like 15 minutes later. He's like, this has nothing to do with JavaScript. Yeah. <laughs> what are you even talking about? Um, and I was like, okay, well, will you learn Solidity, which is the more important thing. But uh, anyway, so basically we just contacted any friend we knew that studied computer science in college basically and was like, let's, let's, put together a team for this and and they were super down and like everybody was just working nights and weekends on trying to Let's put this together from nothing so they came in more as engineers we came in more as from a creative and strategy perspective but we kind of met all uh, on the same page with everything um before launching and uh and since then we've you know it's been much more collaborative what, what were your like initial goals when you guys all get together what are you guys trying to accomplish with I mean, the whole just, project like for me it was just like yeah what'd you guys like kind of expect Honestly, like I, you know, 2020, obviously we had the lockdown with COVID. I was working as a book editor at the time, you know, working 10, 12 hours a day as a senior editor at a book publisher and just wanted to like, had this idea of like, I want to start my own thing, like not be relying on, on, you know, a paycheck kind of thing. And so for me, it was, it was more modest at the time. It was just like, let's just, I just want to make something with my friends. And if it makes some money, like awesome. Um, and I think I purposely went to to Gordon for it, though, because like that's our dynamic is like I think like what's achievable? What can we do? Like how do like I, I was a book editor and a poet. I always want to make things like simple and like bold. And he's like, I want to make it fucking crazy and take over the world. And we meet somewhere in the middle. It's a good um, combo. It is a good yeah. combo. Yeah. It's like uh, yeah. editor. So you're like, this so. is like we got to. Fuck yeah, I mean, so up. my backstory here is that like you're like the good cop, bad cop. It's good yeah, cop, yeah, bad yeah, cop. yeah. every day, every, all day. All, yeah, sorry about that, buddy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so my backstory was I was um, I got really sick in college. I have a, an autoimmune disease called colitis, and I was like basically bed to bathroom for ten years, like really, really ill. Uh, lost ten years of my life, and I had kind of started to basically miraculously recover through the help of uh, Western and Eastern medicine, um, probably couple months before Garga texted me, let's make an NFT. That was like literally what he said, let's make an NFT. Um, and so I don't know if you quite realized just how much fire had been building up for me for 10 years. And so, yeah, I came into this thinking, I want to build something 
extraordinary. You know, I don't just want to like, you know, um, do just something do for, for just fun. a brief moment. It wasn't just for fun for me. I was thinking like, okay, I want to make my mark on the world a little bit. And I want to, and I was also obsessed with online communities. You know, like, you know, when you're sick for 10 years, you know, it's like in your twenties, you know, it's like, you don't really here. have a real life outside of your digital life. That's you know? why we just yeah. play World of Warcraft. That's why we play mm-hmm. World of Warcraft. Or that's why I got into crypto because it was like something I could do from bed, basically. Um, I was play, played a ton of video games outside of World of Warcraft. I was on Twitch. I was on YouTube, you know, just like being a part of online communities on Discord. Just like that was my home, you know? That was like my version of the metaverse, you know? It was the way I could experience reality and not feel bad, basically, about myself. Um, and so Board API Club in particular, but, you know, the rest of the things that we're doing at Yuga Labs – really became an opportunity for me to um, build and help foster c- online communities that I thought, you know, would push the space forward, the communities that I myself would want to be a part of. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What happened on that launch day? That was crazy. So, like, there were, there were a couple days there where, like, you know, we, we started off and uh, we had, like, our pre-sale. Um, we were giving away one Ethereum at the time to somebody who could, like, solve some really shitty like puzzles that were on our site that like you know we we hired someone to help come up with and basically everybody who was in our discord at the time like you know up until these things were going to be for sale had no interest in the project they were just there to like try and win this money and we were like okay this isn't going too hot like uh that's okay though like you know we just we're trying to market the shit out of it any way we could one of the ways we did that is we like we started making like um board apes that look like certain influencers. Like if there's somebody, you know, ha- whose profile picture on the internet was like this anime girl with with pink hair, we're like, let's do like a, a BYC version of this person and and tweet it out at them and try and get some attention that was way. Was there anybody like, specific you guys chose to do that with? It wasn't really anyone like... It was just like crypto Twitter people. It was just like people. random people. It was oh, just yeah. like anyone who we thought might, you know, laugh at it or retweet it or something. You know, I don't know. It was like a smorgasbord. Because we were like, starting from zero. Like, yeah. We had zero audience. We had right. zero yeah. followers. Like we were just trying to like, how do we go? How do we? It's pretty smart this? though. Yeah. 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 I mean, we'd seen it done before. That's it. Wasn't like our original idea. We'd you know yeah. to be fair. But, but we just went. You know, like everything. We were like, how do we take this to the next level? How do we go harder with it? Like we got to yeah. you know give away Ethereum. We got to tweet this out. We got to make this cheaper than anything's been out there before. We have to make it so everybody's buying it at the same price, which isn't how these things were selling before that. What was mint price? It was 0.08 ETH, which was around $200 per eight. Crazy. Um, yeah. yeah. Imagine. Uh, I got some angry friends who uh, yeah, were like, did you why guys... didn't you tell me to yeah. buy an eight for $200, yeah. you asked? Yeah. <laughs> That's good, though, because there's probably some like random people that bought it that couldn't afford it what it is now, right? That's yeah, exactly no, right. Stuff like That's, that. That's exactly right. Like, you know, the, the model was we wanted to make this egalitarian because before us, a lot of the NFTs around then – were being priced on a bonding curve, essentially. So it ended up being kind of like a fucking Ponzi, frankly, because it was like you could the first person to buy one got one for less than the person who was the last person to buy one. So it became like people who got an early dumping on people who got later. But that didn't foster a community whatsoever because it was like it made it like competitive. It made it like, oh, we're against each other in a sense. Mm. Um, you know, like you're tra- literally trading against each other. So we priced them all at $200 to make sure that this was truly a club, like truly an egalitarian membership. Um, so it didn't matter if you minted a gold ape or if you minted a, a floor ape, you know, it d- didn't matter. Um, your utility, your membership was the same. Yeah. The token was always supposed to re- represent like your entrance into this club and like day one, what the club was, it was a like a digital space where you could play on this pixel board like we we're talking about. But we wanted to have open the possibility of like more and more stuff. And then if you had just one ape, then you got access to everything. And it didn't matter if it was a good ape or a you know, cheap one or an expensive one. They're and all so, good apes. Yeah, they're all they're beautiful. So when you did the mint, how quickly did it go? Well, so we we had a pre-sale that lasted a week. And again, as Gargo was saying, it basically um, flopped. Kind of. flopped yeah, it was know, like 400 sold. You know, which, we did everything we yeah. could to promote it as much as possible. 400 like it, in a week? Yeah. Four or 500. Which, but the thing is, back then, you either sold out like immediately or you kind of never did is what the feeling was. Yeah. So- you know, it yeah. wasn't like 400 in a week. Oh, we did it. It was like, oh, this might never happen. And so you got kind of despondent. I was, I was end. like, shit, we, you know, and I call you like really angry. Being like, no, we got to go. We got to go. We You're ready to this. quit. I wasn't ready to quit. I was just like, fuck, like what's happening. We're going to, I didn't, I wasn't going to oh, quit. Wait, how how, how soon were you ready to quit fucking... though? A week in? No. Well, it was, this was after like three months of nonstop, oh, like, shit. you know, working on this and, 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 it you tweeted not, like a hundred people or yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah. anything we could do. And you know, some of the early community members, 
um, in particular were just so amazingly helpful. Um, there's two in particular, or three in particular that I recall that, you know, they had, you know, they knew some people in crypto and they, you know, they, they saw the vision for what we were trying to build here and they, you know, hesitantly, you know, believed in what we were trying to do. And so they would reach out to people and that I think moved the needle a little bit, mm-hmm. but it really wasn't until yeah, what was the turning point? The yeah. apes revealed, right? So pre-sale, you didn't get to see what you had. Right. It was kind of like, like that, you, you that owned moment. one, but it was like, you didn't know which one it was. You couldn't empathize with it yet. It was just like, you owned one of 10,000 apes. You didn't know like, yo, it's this guy. Actually. Right, right. And some, yeah. somehow that, that little magic part of like, you know, basically like cracking it open and saying like, oh, that one's mine and people can identify with that. How long was that though? Between the reveal, the purchase and the reveal? It was just a week there. A week and then the reveal, they sold out within like, I think four or six hours. Once they were revealed, it was flying off. A madhouse. We we flipped Uniswap at the time, which was like to us mind blowing. Oh, Um, that's awesome. And um, yeah, I mean, that was when people saw the apes. It's kind of like the way I think about it is like, I think some people like equate it to slot machines and I don't think that's accurate. I think it's more like, Toys R Us, you go and there's like those machines where you get like the little characters or whatever. And it's like, you're, you know, you don't know which one you're going to get when you put put in the quarter and yeah. spin yeah, it and yeah, see yeah. what you're going to get. I think that it's like a week's that. a little sweat though. Like yeah. you're sitting there like, oh, I want to see this fucking guy. Yeah. Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah, yeah you know? for sure. Yeah. So um, at the time, Mutant Apes, Kennel Club, were they part of the roadmap yet or were they? We had a vision, not not the Kennel Club. The, the, mutants, the mutants were a vision for the end of the, the roadmap for sure. Um, and... We kind of knew what we were going to do there, and that took a long time to build. We were like working on that throughout the, pretty much from the from the moment we sold out. I started working on mutants almost instantaneously with a couple of amazing artists. Yeah, we um, we, we hit like in, if you go to the website in the back of like the inside of the bar, there was this mutant ape arcade machine that we we put there, and it was just the idea of this like I don't know this metafiction of like oh there's this weird arcade machine, this is like magical machine that's going to do something to the apes. Like you know you got to kind of wait and see. Um, and we really just wanted to blow people's minds with like how crazy different the art would be than than the originals too. So yeah, what Mutant Ape sold the other day for like three point nine million or something. I crazy. think it was one of the mega megas. Yeah, was that was yeah, almost four million. Yeah, it was like two days ago. Oh, a Mutant right? Ape did? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah oh, Mega Mutant. It was yeah. fucking dope wild. though. Like, yeah, it's a yeah, great mega. Yeah, that one, the trippy one, one. one? Yeah. It's so good. Yeah, so good. yeah. yeah. Shout what? out Lovins, who uh, is the artist behind so that. So you guys sell out on uh, the board apes and you go right into Mutant Apes. We we start working on them, but it was like a huge huge endeavor for us. But really, there was a lot of like small things we did in between then where it was like, I think the first kind of moment was a month later, we did our first merch drop. And it was what, the idea. What was the floor at at that time, like a month later? Oh, I don't even you know. You remember? I have no idea. I mean, it was pretty steadily rising. You know, I mean, there'd be like little dips or whatever. But honestly, the, I, I'd be completely frank with you. We'd never look at the floor price, like ever. Ever. Uh, ever. I, I don't care. I just like, it's not a part of explain, like, why we're doing explain this. that. Reasoning. I'm not trying to build something to increase its value. I'm just trying to increase. Um, well, if I'm bu- if I'm building something, it's not to raise the floor price of a thing. I'm literally just doing it because I want to have fun. Well, mm. if you like focus on that part of it, it's kind of a loser's game. I think it's like you if yeah. you're focused on that. Yeah, maybe you can make it go up for a little while. Yeah. But then it's going to just come 100%. crashing down. So you yeah. got to just think about like building. utility, the community building everything else, and it and that yeah. part will sort itself. Yeah, out like the you- fun community utility. Those are the things that matter here. And it's, I remember like like re- really recently we had like a a, a friend who's a founder in, in the space reach out to us and he was like, I just don't know how to get the floor price of my project to go up. I'm like, don't think about that. Go take mushrooms in the forest and think about something cool you could do with the project instead. Like, <laughs> it's you- just such a new space. So like you can do something weird with an NFT that hasn't been done before. I think the space will reward that. Yeah. And so there's like a got- world of opportunity yeah. uh, opportunity in terms of utility here. I mean, like I feel like people like we've just like opened the door there. Like it's it's really endless. Mm. Yeah, that we talk about that too. It's beautiful that we could pretty much write our own rules. Did you guys you have know? any like crazy reaction when you see one of the big first celebrities buy in and then there's just this domino effect? Of- yeah, who was the first? It was pretty crazy. I think like we had a few oh, post Malone throughout that whole summer. Post came way later, way later. I mean, like, oh, really? early, like honestly, I saw Jimmy early Fallon was, bought one. Jimmy yeah, Fallon bought one. That was pretty too. wild. I, I mean, think Steph Curry. Was Steph Curry. That was the was, moment. Yeah, that was the craziest. Uh, oh yeah, because that, that, that was like, that was he, a I big think jump. Even popped into our Discord. He for a was moment. before Post. He popped into the Discord. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I think yeah, Shaq, Shaq did too. And those are those guys where I was like, Shaq's always oh fuck, like crazy. We've kind of made it. Like this is like this is real now on a whole nother level. You know, there's a whole domino effect. What's Steph's username on Discord? I don't remember. I don't remember. I think you know. Honestly, I think he just popped in there like. Just yeah. to say hi. How yeah. crazy hi. was the fucking yeah. Discord? Yeah, it was wild. It was wild. It yeah, was wild. that's insane. Yeah. Our I mean, Discord I think it was, was the so day fun. that we were dropping mutants, and so we weren't even like we were so focused on everything else that, and somebody just like was. I was just started getting texts, and I was like, "What?" We're What's always like, like, literally, I think the last to know when a new celebrity joins too. It's you know, it's it goes so viral though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, who's bought it? You know, like I've like, seen we got John's day. buddy, uh, John's 
very close friend, uh, Justin Bieber, bought one. Well, his was one point two million. I don't remember how much he bought it for. I love Bieber's eight, the lonely eight. Yeah. So well, that's well. what he because people were you know giving him a hard time like you overpaid. Yeah, who cares? And I asked him about it. And that's what he said. He said he looked lonely. And he that's wanted why that I one. You know, yeah, he wanted like, that one. Yeah, yeah, NFT space. And, and can the be number, weird right? It's, there's something there with the number for him that like it's. Uh, uh, yeah, he just told me he looked lonely. He said yeah, I feel okay. like he he looked sad and lonely, and he needed a friend. Is what he told me. Yeah. If he wants yeah. it, he gets it. And yeah, exactly yeah. right. Yeah. It's like you just, he wants the ape that he wants. Yeah. yeah. Has I have any celebs tried to like finesse like a free ape out off you guys? Well, we don't own any apes, right? I only own one ape. Right. So it's all like that was another thing that we like did kind of differently than other projects at the time. Like early on in NFTs, um, like CryptoPunks, and there's nothing, this is not to besmirch them at all. This was just their model. You know, it was like, well, rather, you know, there weren't really like prominent marketplaces like OpenSea at the time that were charging like a, you could charge like a secondary percentage off. So every time a board ape gets sold, we take a small percent of that, right? right. On marketplaces, right? It's 2.5% on board apes, <laughs> to be clear. Um, another model in the early days was, okay, we could just withhold a bunch of them. And so those become assets for us if, you know, the price increases, right? Um, we didn't do that. We thought like, mm -hmm. well, no, for what we're doing, it doesn't make a lot of sense because we're trying to create this egalitarian club. We want as many club members as possible. You know, the only thing that like really mattered to us, you know, since we didn't really think about floor price was the unique wallet holder account, right? Like, so that like actually this was decentralized as much as possible, um, distributed as much as possible, I should yeah, say. Yeah, if, if you have 10,000 apes and, and 10,000 unique holders, like that's the grail in our opinion, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. which... You know, it's we're and so we have like double the unique wallets or maybe more than punks to this day. Yeah. But uh Yeah, so sometimes someone will come out reach out to us and be like, Hey, I want to get an ape. And I'm like, Cool, go on the marketplace. Yeah. Like yeah. I don't know. I, I saw some there's some unique things that people are doing. There's like a band, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So that has nothing yeah, no, to do with you guys. Gotta, Seth Green's now doing a, a TV show uh with his board ape or uh, where he's playing the character. Um and I, I saw a trailer uh from Vcon where he when he promoted it and it was amazing looking. Um there's non-fungible films. It's another project that's kicking off. They're trying to, because like the cool thing about it, this is like, yeah, you can utilize the IP and that's awesome. Mm -hmm. But then there's this whole other side of it, which is like, okay, if you start your own project in relationship to the IP, there's another project called like Jenkins, the valet, for, for instance, that like ended up raising like over a hundred million dollars from VCs. And like, they're basically creating like a platform for decentralized storytelling. Um, I, I, mean, don't like, cool. I don't think that's how much there is. Like, okay. The valuation I, or whatever. I might, I might not know the value King, of that. Kingship is the one. Kingship, yeah, Kingship with the yeah, yeah, Universal sure. Music. We, we, we know that we're just like yeah, on yeah, screen yeah, yeah, and yeah. we're like. Yeah, she's, uh, she's uh, Celine Joshua is the one at Universal Music. She's like, I think she's, uh, she's she joined the team a few years ago to run innovation. And now I think she's running Web3 for uh, Universal. And she's always the one. And she's the one, you know, I got to give her credit. Like she's we're the one that's been working with like Snoop and Nick Adler a while ago to get them. And like she goes to artists. Um, you know, her whole job, she reports directly to the president of Universal, Lucian Grange, so, uh, yeah. or the chairman. And um, her whole job is to, like, break innovation. And that's why she's been all up. She's all about apes. So yeah, she's like, incredible. And yeah. she's a killer. I mean, she's yeah. doing an amazing job. Yeah. So yeah. She's, she's one of, and it's pretty nice to see someone like her, like, you know, going that, in and. Because people think she's crazy, right? When she's talking about these yeah, things. Yeah, it's hard like, to take, like, you know, company to, like, in, like, you know, you know hey, we should, level. Yeah, we should, you know, invest in million dollars in apes. And, you know, like, no, I think it's, I think it's visionary. Like I think it's, like, it's comparable to, like, you know, people think it's crazy. Like, gamers in particular don't understand NFTs right now, I think. Or, like, gamers, like, you know, in the sense of, like, Call of Duty or whatever. They're, like, you know. Um, but that's completely going to change. Like, in all these industries, like, people are going to understand the utility of this down the road, mm -hmm, I think. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, NFTs imply a lot of things but one of it is ownership right it's yeah. like if i'm playing a game like if you played it old like diablo right sure and it's like let's say that game no longer exists let's say like they turn off the switch i see this on tiktok all the time it's like the last days of a of, a, of an mmrpg and it's like because the company just wasn't making enough money 14 years later and they're just going to turn off the switch and that server's gone and you see players who devoted like 14 years of their lives to a game made friends relationships maybe met their spouse in the game you know it's like and suddenly it's like nope this is gone now it's like because there was no real ownership, right? Like I'm you surprised. didn't own the character or the or your inventory right. or your home that you built or anything. NFTs completely changed that model. Yeah. You look at like, what is it? Riot made uh four billion dollars last year. Two, sorry, two billion dollars last year selling cosmetics in League of Legends. Um, Epic made four billion dollars selling cosmetics in Fortnite. All of that value goes in, none of it's coming back out. Yeah. It doesn't make sense, right? And it's like NFTs completely changed that model. I was going to say, I'm kind of surprised you can't. It'd be cool. Like in Fortnite's a game where you could do it, where you could play as your NFT. I'm surprised Absolutely. you can't do that yet. Yeah. Why? And so that's what we're building on the other side, our metaverse, but when we can get into that as well. But I mean, you know, the idea here is like interoperability. It's like you should be, and you should be able to like build an asset, yeah. you know, an SDK, software developer kit, and 
create your thing. And then if you want to play on it there, great. If you want to take it somewhere else, great. It's yeah, that's for shit. When do you crazy. think technology will like connect like that where like someone can buy an NFT and then put their shirt on their character? And like, I, think I, think actually, very, I think it's happening very It's quickly. happening. Yeah. And I think the, the trick is, I think a lot of major game companies are very interested in it. But it's hard, like you were saying, for a, a big incumbent company to start innovating on that level. And I think that's like, you know. When it does, it'll be that's huge, where you come in. That's, that's where yeah. we come in. It's like we already have the hardcore NFT community that wants to see this, that can understand the value proposition there. You know, and when Ubisoft or somebody likes that tries to start getting into NFTs, then there's like 20 Reddit threads that like with, you know, the NFTs are terrible and blah, blah, blah. And they, they don't quite understand the value proposition there. Whereas we do and we can kind of emanate out from that place of power and. You, yeah, guys, people interested you guys get a lot of big companies coming to you, like help us out? Yeah. Because we get it. I can't imagine what you guys get. Yeah, we get a lot of inbound, yeah. But especially yeah, you, guys, sure you guys. You guys are like the, yeah, the leaders like, of the space. So it's like, I can only imagine how many people are trying to get advice from you guys. And Yeah. I mean, again, we're working a lot. You know I mean? this is <laughs> We work like 12, 14 hour days often. Um, and I, I would say like 90% of our job right now is just to say no to people, yeah. frankly. Um, it's a lesson. Ninety percent of our Stay job focused. is to grow the company. That's that's yeah. what I spent all my yeah. day. Okay, well, ninety percent of my job is saying no. Yeah, you got it. You got it. You got to stay focused. Good cop, bad cop. I like yeah, it. That's right. That's yeah. right. One of the other things, though, going back to like um, ownership, is uh, one thing you guys did differently with CryptoPunks was allowing the um, changing the IP ownership. Yeah, right? and that kind of that changed the game with CryptoPunks, which was their issue with Apes going against Apes first. Like, wait, I don't own the IP here. By an ape, then you guys change that up after your acquisition of CryptoPunks. Yeah, I mean, look, like Matt and John, the, the creators of CryptoPunks, um, the guys from Larva Labs, are they're absolute geniuses, visionaries. Like, yeah. you know, to come up with that with the model that they did at that time is amazing. Yeah. The reality is the markets have changed a bit. There's like new dynamics, things that like OpenSea has introduced. And yeah, when we met with them and talked about the idea of us acquiring CryptoPunks from them, that was something that we would only have done it if we could do what, exactly what you said, where we, we're, we're owning this thing, but at the same time making it a bit more decentralized now, making it so anybody can own the IP of the, you know, mm -hmm. has a license to use their punk in, in any commercial way that they want, essentially. Why did, yeah. why did you guys want to buy crypto punks and like me bits and stuff? Punks is like, it's like the Mona Lisa of like, you know, or like early cave paintings of like NFTs in our opinion. It's like the, the first true iteration. If like you preserve the legacy of that thing into the future, then it's it's good for the whole ecosystem. Mm. And frankly, it was like thinking about who else might own it. It was like that I scared us could, a little bit. That yeah. scared us a little bit. Yeah. And mm. so we were like, let's. But why though? I we don't. You know, if, if it if it gets really kitschy or, or like yeah. they, they damage the, the brand to take over the world. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. It's kind of interesting because you guys are kind of like you own what mutant apes, crypto punks, me bits. Board, so you guys own like the biggest player. Yeah, we own the. I think is there any negative the that entire... comes from that though? Of owning I mean, if one, the two guys own the biggest projects in the space. We don't want to take any more market share from anybody else. Like the yeah. whole goal here is like, how do we grow the pie? You know, Got we're 25% of the pie. Cool. Let's grow the pie. How do we do that? There's a lot of work that needs to be done. Like infrastructure wise, it needs to be safer. It needs to be more secure. If my mom wanted to buy a board ape, you know, you could wait until the end of the world right now. She wouldn't be able to figure <laughs> it out. Like it's just not that easy yet. Mm -hmm. um, and so we can do that kind of work. Uh, for these communities to kind of broaden things and open it up, and exactly like we we just want everybody to win. And if we can make those kind of tools so everybody has an easier time of it, yeah. the better. You guys also uh, you guys raised money from Andreessen recently a lot, right? Uh, Not just Andreessen, well, but, but yeah, the big they, group. I mean, yeah, four hundred fifty million dollars. Yeah, we yeah. raised it a four billion dollar valuation. That's a yeah. shit ton of money. That's a lot. Yeah. What's so, kind of so Yuga Labs is worth four billion dollars currently at our, at our last valuation. Yeah. yeah. And when was the LLC made on Zoom? <laughs> So it was like a year and two months, a year and a month. Yeah. A year and a month, and it's oh, worth four billion. Yeah, that's fucking ridiculous. It was the largest seed round in human history, I believe. I well, for yeah. for you know U.S. seed round valuation, I think. Okay. Yeah. So. Anyway, another, another friend of mine, Holy old friend of mine, Chris shit. Lyons, crazy. sits on the board. And, yeah, uh, I love Chris. Chris. Yeah, Chris. Yeah. We were talking to him earlier today. Like he's yeah. Chris, an old friend of mine. I live in, we live in San Francisco together, but uh, um, kind of like what's the plan with that, right? Because I mean, with that kind of money. You guys are, you guys got some shit up your sleeve, right? Like you're building something. You're building more. a lot. Yeah. I mean, it's, I can't really speak too much on what we're building, but you know, I, I can say that, um, other side is a huge, uh, passion project here now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's an incredibly anything, ambitious yeah. project. It's ridiculously you know? ambitious. Is there anything you could tell us about the goals for that? I mean, it's just kind of like, 
like we were saying earlier, like the the idea of growing up and playing these like in these virtual worlds, like World of Warcraft, these other things, that was like the original metaverse. It wasn't like kind of like what what Meta's going out there with. We're like, you're in a conference room and you have no legs and you're hanging out or whatever. It was like, no, you're just like playing a game and you're meeting people that you would have deep relationships with for years. And if you can recreate some of those spaces, but have more ownership of your assets within them, if there's decentralized ways for people to like contribute to them, like the best stuff that's come out of games in the past 20 years is a lot of it's like mods and stuff that comes from the ground up. And then those same people are like, oh, smash subscribe to my YouTube or donate to my Patreon or whatever. There's no way for them to monetize that within the platform itself. They're just like asking for handouts for the good that they did. So blockchain offers like a more permissionless way to like align incentives, reward people for work they're doing on a platform rather than, you know, this Patreon model. And I think it'll disrupt a lot of things that are happening out there where like, you know, Apple takes 30% of everything that gets made on the app store. Roblox takes a ton. Minecraft takes a ton. Like if you can be less greedy on that front and encourage more content, then the creators will flock there. And your mode is just that this is where the party's at. So is the other side, do you think like the main focus right now? No, I think it's evenly distributed, frankly. Um, it's, it's kind of where everything comes together though. It you is. Know, we, we have teams yeah. working on all the brands and, and that's what we're really trying to do is like, you know. So is it like, is it kind of like, it's like a metaverse, like a game and like a marketplace? Is that like the We're going to be building out a game it? on other side, but no, I would I would view it more as a platform. As a platform. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can, yeah, think, of it, you can think of it like uh, NFT roadblocks, but just that looks better. Right. Yeah. I always felt that depiction of like the metaverse, like how they're showing it on like Facebook and all the viral things you see is like, is that quite accurate to what I like, mean, like a you know, metaverse yeah, is? Yeah. Like metaverse comes from like, uh, there was a novel, science fi novel called, uh, sci fi novel called Snow Crash. And it like, and then, the other way that it became kind of popularized was from Ready Player One. I don't know if you guys read the book or saw mm-hmm. the movie. Yeah, and in both of those visions were fairly dystopian, I think. And, and it was this idea that like, you know, oh, we're going to exist in virtual worlds in the future, right? Like that's like the next, that's like kind of the end point of the internet to one degree or another. And I, I do think that that is fairly the end point of the internet maybe, but or, or at least the next evolution of it. But it doesn't have to be dystopian. It doesn't have to be weird. It doesn't have to be like we're sending our kids to like, you know, online metaverse school and they're yeah. plugging in on 15 years with Neuralink yeah, or whatever. So. Like, it doesn't have to be that. It could be something like, again, it, with the ethos of Board API Club, it could be egalitarian. It could be fun. It could be primarily a platform for experimentation and games. Um, so we kind of have this sort of like moral obligation in the back of our heads that's like, okay, we can be at the forefront of this thing to one degree or another, um, taking what we learned from MMORPGs and online communities and build something that um, helps shape what the metaverse becomes in the future, kind of like set the ground rules here. It's like, no, 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 we're not allowing, we're not going to say that a 40% rake on secondary sales is acceptable. We're saying, you know, something like more like 2.5 or 5% is acceptable. Um, and um, and make the focus on fun rather than, you know, let's go, you know, live our entire lives digitally. That's so interesting. That shit's going to be huge. Yeah, You guys yeah. own a bunch of land in the metaverse already? crazy yeah yeah yeah, that that was part of the goal here is like this is a platform and so we want to be able to incentivize frankly other big game companies other people Mm -hmm. that are coming to us who want to build on this platform like how do we get them invested into it and so unlike with baic we did reserve more nfts for this than i think one of the biggest things and the toughest thing to overcome because like you guys said you learned everything pretty much in the get-go from crypto twitter it's like, how do you educate normal people on this shit? Like, I mean, I think it's part of this, right? It's like coming on podcasts, getting out there. I think it's like normalizing the space a little bit and sort of like helping people understand. You know, I mean, it's like, you know, I, I see every now and then like a very anti NFT person being like, oh, monkey JPEGs or whatever. And you're just like, okay. But like, kind of like, people spend, think spend it's a, a scam. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a scam. I think it's a Ponzi or whatever. It's like, come in, look at a little bit of what we're building. Look at the ecosystem. Look at the utility here. Look at the intellectual property and understand that like, we're building something that's kind of never been done before. Yeah. I think you got to like, there's got to be a way to kind of dumb it down for everybody. Yeah. I you, think it's just going to be over time though. Like half our fan base, like I said, half of them will be like hardcore and they'll be like making fun of us because we're not asking you guys like more intelligent questions. And then half will be like, they just don't even get it at all. So it's <laughs> yeah. there's such a big gap, I find, just from talking to, to yeah. fans and meeting yeah. people. Yeah. It's interesting. But I think over time is the way that everyone will just be educated. I, on, I, you know? I completely agree. Yeah. I think yeah. gaming is going to be a big... Yeah. way that oh, that yeah. happens like like we we're saying like you know billions of dollars a year accrue to these companies for digital assets that people want to own that 
they're kind of renting and they don't actually truly own like you know like league of legends makes like yeah a couple so you billion think, dollars a year off like teemo skins yeah and shit. you like, think like like for example like call of duty one day like let's say i buy like an nft of like a flamethrower do you think one day like call of duty will let you like pull from the blockchain and bring that flamethrower into the game or something i think like, do you think it'll get to that yeah, level that'd be crazy i think there's you know there's a couple different things that nfts would bring to that number one if you buy a skin in, in Fortnite or something like that, you don't know how many are out there and you can't really trade that. And that's an easy use case where it's like you would know off the bat, hey, there's only 5,000 of these out in the world and I can trade it and I don't need anyone's permission to do that. It's not like if you like back in the day, you'd level up your character in World of Warcraft to 60 and you get bored, and you want to sell it. You go to eBay and you try and sell it and maybe they like delete your eBay account or ban your World of Warcraft account. Or you successfully sell it and then they ban that guy's account or whatever. Like there needs to everywhere in business in the world, like things are tilting more in favor of users. Mm. And this is a natural place where users can get more out of the things that they're buying on a platform. It's so crazy you say that too, because there's definitely people out there that have spent five, ten grand on skins in Fortnite and nothing like in the metal ownership. Like, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And they they can't, you know, I don't think in a lot of these platforms, they couldn't even give it away to a friend if they wanted to. Yeah. Like they can't trade it. But they're willing to spend that on That would be crazy if that happens. To answer your question directly, I think it's going to depend, like the Call of Duty question, I think it depends on the platform that's built on, right? It's like, you can kind of see something like that potentially happening on Roblox, for instance. Although it's like, that's not going to have like the fidelity of of Call of Duty. But on a platform such as Other Side, right? Like you could build out a Call of Duty game theoretically on Other Side and have that level of interoperability. That would be crazy. Yeah. You guys know how many uh, total unique wallets you have between all your projects? Oh, I think we recently learned that. I'm, I'm blanking, but... Um, 60,000, 70,000, 80,000? It's in that range. Yeah. You guys have quite a community. That's kind of crazy, right? Like The community is amazing. Yeah. Uh, like, shout out to the whole Discord. They're like the best people in the world. Yeah. Um, you guys did merch. That crushed. I got mine. Yeah. Thank Are you. there any yeah. like unique concepts with, that people have with the apes that haven't hit yet? you guys have heard of or anything that i mean we've been question. seeing like cool stuff i mean like everything yeah, alcohol uh, you know alcohol well, that you, you haven't go, seen but yet. like you know like <laughs> seth green's shit is tv dope. shows yeah, it's um really cool. you know digital bands like you were saying mm-hmm. uh you know i think that's the burger shop in long the Beach, burger shop like the important part is that like snoop what snoop it's is a permissionless cool. process oh, yeah. like and no one needs our permission Bombay? they just yeah, need to own the ape and then they can they can do it you know yeah so it's kind of cool you get your ape and then it's up to you to do your creative with it yeah yeah it's just on you we don't want to be gatekeepers in that way, and and that's where like the creativity lies. Um, yeah. What's the initial goal when you guys drop like Ape Coin? That's just like that's part of Yuga Labs. Is Crypto Punk's gonna drop a coin? So that, that's born out of the ecosystem, and Yuga's like adopted it as something that we are, you, you know, the currency for everything that we're building. But you know, we're not in control of Ape yeah. Coin in any way. There's this is a DAO. This is a decentralized thing. Like we want to use Ape Coin as the currency for other side. Mm-hmm for as many like in world, like real world and also digital like things that we can do. It's just mm. like the currency. I saw but, Gucci accepts it. Yeah, that's yeah. Wild. how weird is that? that? Cool. Yeah. Is that random or are you guys like, what the fuck? Like Gucci retailers accept ApeCoin? It's it's sick. I it's mean, like, like step in the right direction though, I guess. Yeah. I know. Drives adoption. I think it's great. Yeah. What was what was it that Tiffany did recently? So Tiffany, uh, yeah. you know, did a uh, a drop of 250 like necklaces you know like pendants uh where if you owned a crypto punk they'll make you like a bespoke custom like you know tiffany necklace with your your punk and they're like these are like you know gold and jewels and like you know it's tiffany it's like high quality shit wow. so and there's a limited edition of them so it's like it's really like an and it's their flag. first thing in the, the, in the space so the it's money like, uh, what, how much i think it was 30 like 30 yeah. 30 yeah. It was, it was wow. price. No, no, but so, total amount though 250 some... so it's like yeah i mean it was a 30 ETH. You know what? What is that like? Fifty-five k at probably at the yeah. time that they did it. But I mean, for it. like a one of two hundred and fifty personalized Tiffany mm-hmm. pendant. You know, I mean, it's yeah. Like, Tiffany sells things for fifty-five thousand. So if you own a crypto pump, yeah. you get one of those automatically. Not all. No, of that. No, 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 no. This was something it that was offered to exclusively crypto to punk yeah, holders. Yeah. Got it. So um, I had to buy it. But yeah. that goes back to what we were talking about earlier. It's pretty cool. Is the fact that that wasn't know. a collab. That was something that they did with people who own the IP. And they were able right. to do it because they because changed that game with CryptoPunks allowing, you know, the holders to that's right. own the IP. That's right. But yeah, uh, like, to, like to be clear, apes. we didn't have to, anything to do with that. Like we if just, we owned know, a CryptoPunk cool. before, se- six months ago or a year ago, we wouldn't be able to, even if you owned, bought it and you bought it for a million bucks, you weren't able to put it on beef jerky or alcohol. Oh, God. And then yeah, they the changed IP. their rules when after their acquisition. Right, because of, because of the way the IP is set up, you know, it's like any brand can come in 
and offer things exclusively to holders cryptographically. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, you can yeah. cryptographically verify membership, right? So you can, it's easy. Got it. Yeah. It's just trying to like push forward like the amount of innovation, creativity in the space. Like just free things up a little yeah. bit more. That's yeah. why I like the physical stuff. Like I, you know, I mean, yeah. I mean, how much money do like the Simpsons do outside of the Simpsons with video games and merch and all that? And um, my mom actually, my mom knows nothing about NFTs. But when I was telling her about apes once, she's like, oh, it's like the new Simpsons. It's like this generation Simpsons. Yeah. Like, oh, shit. Yeah, I guess it's like that. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, I mean pop culturally, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. You know, pop culture, it's it is like today's generation Simpsons. Yeah, when we it's first awesome. started, I remember like our cr- chief creative officer uh, Patrick was like, "Oh, it's like the new smiley face." That's how he saw it. Like you know, like remember the '70s smiley face mm-hmm. T-shirts that was mm-hmm. like captured the cultural zeitgeist in that way. And yeah, I, the thing Forrest Gump came up with, right? Yeah. He came up with the smiley face. <laughs> is that really? No, no. In the movie, like remember, like there was like a splash on his T-shirt and made a smiley face. Oh, right, right. Tom, take yeah, credit. Yeah, 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 Tom yeah, Hanks yeah, 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 took yeah. credit for the smiley face. <laughs> What do you guys think about like the, I know the whole market's down, but what do you think about the slight, like, is there like a disinterest in NFTs as a whole right now? Or like, what's your thoughts on that? I think uh. it's been like, you know, there's less, it's, it's less crazy than it, than it had been. But like, I don't know, I, we feel like we're doing great. You know, things are, are fine out there and that we can keep building. We, you know, like you said, we have a, a pretty big war chest from our raise. And we had and a pretty big just, war chest from before then too. Yeah. And so like, you know. Um, These things happen you guys had in a cycles. Massive war chest before too, right? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. We're a very profitable company, and so, but one of the reasons we raised, right, was we were thinking like because we'd been around in 2017, we'd seen what happens with these market cycles, and we we're like, okay. Let's make sure, let's ensure that we're like extraordinarily well capitalized and send a signal that like, hey, we're going to be around no matter what happens. Three year, four year bear market, we're building, right? Like we have the runway to last. Yeah, um, that was very important to us. And then also there was like, just frankly. Like A sixteen Z is like an extraordinary strategic advisor. You know, what I mean, yeah. it's like these these VCs are some of them are like amazing to have on your side. Is there like a main office right now? We have an office in New York, but there really isn't central. We were born out of COVID, you know, so right. we're really all over. We have people in LA, Austin, New York, uh, South America, Europe. We're everywhere. Wow. Yeah. So, what does the future look like? What's the next steps for Board API Club? Everything CryptoPunks. Is there anything in the works? I mean, we just want to keep embracing all the things that that have you know been successful as it is. It's like more places where it's not just an NFT and it gives you access to in-world events, digital spaces, gaming interoperability, like giving more things for communities to play with and build on top of. You know, for BOIC in particular, I think like the merch stuff is is like really key to the brand, the the streetwear aspects to it, and we have a lot of like things that some exciting stuff in the pipeline for that in particular. You guys do a collab with Adidas, right? We did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How'd yeah. that go? It oh, great. yeah. Dude, great. how did Adidas that come awesome. about? Yeah, that was... That came about very early on, too. Oh, that story. Was like, Super wow, organically. Like, you know, I think they were just fans. They reached out. I mean... Like, via the Discord. So what happened? It was like, like a, a year, like year a ago this time, I think, right? It was, it was fall ben, 2021. Was it? So someone from Adidas hopped in the Discord. What'd they say? Yeah, we just got like DMs and they were like, oh, you know, like that they were with Adidas and that they wanted to like work with us on a, you know... A metaverse project essentially is what I think. How like, crazy was that? Well, I think like the, the people who were behind it, there's one guy, Ben in particular, who was just like an NFT fan. I think he'd owned a board ape and he was just like, This is really exciting. I'm gonna take this to the higher ups and show them what we can do here. And he came about it really organically, really like with the community in mind. And it was a super successful project because of that, right? Like unlike like brands that sometimes come into the space and it's just like it's just a cash grab. They're not really investing in the Well, ecosystem. a lot of brands they'll wanna just like take you know they'll be like oh wow. you know we're a big brand we do physical products but for our nft thing we're just going to do an nft and there's there's they're not bringing their core competency into it at all yeah whereas adidas from the start was like hey you know they're a you know af- athletic brand they wanted to actually like make product and and come at this authentically and like bring their expertise into it and so that's why we were like okay this is legit like yeah. let's go and it was more than us too it was two other projects it was pixel G- ball pixel and g money yeah so they really just like we're like trying to showcase this like hey we're doing this for the whole nft community I mean, to build a brand that quickly and do a collab with Adidas is pretty crazy. Yeah, that was pretty wild. Yeah. 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 I mean, but we you know, went, considering we that, that like our UFC. first merch drop was boxed up in Greg's mom's backyard last summer, uh, just the four founders, um, because I was so dumb that I was like, no, we could just like ship it. Our, we could do the fulfillment ourselves, guys. Like, this is no big deal. And I'm like, meanwhile, I'm like sweating fucking bricks. Like, this was the worst idea I ever that's had. That's how everybody starts, though. Yeah. That, that's what it was. Like, I, there's like great photos of us just like boxing because I couldn't even come inside because it was like during COVID and his mom wouldn't even let me inside. Oh, and I was shit. just like, we're just out just sweating. Sticky kids in the backyard. Sticky kids in the backyard yeah. boxing. I, up. I, you know, web, Twitter and Instagram, like, they haven't really gone to Web3 route. I mean, the most anyone's done is like Twitter Profile created the, octa- yeah, yeah. the octagon. 
for profile pick. Like that's the. Like, Are you guys fans of the octagon? I feel like it's kind of more saucy I, if you don't do the octagon. I, yeah, I don't do it personally, but <laughs> it's kind of like trying I, too I, hard. I kind of like, 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 like do like it to a certain extent. What I what I don't like about it is that they charge for it, right? Like yeah. that to me was like, why did you uh, monetize crazy, that? Yeah. Like why why didn't you roll this out just like Thanks. for free? Like yeah. this wasn't like it yeah. felt like a, it felt like um a business decision rather than a community decision. And that's, yeah. that's what felt inauthentic to me. Yeah, it is, it is uh, like, all right, who's got money? Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, they're spending money holders. on NFTs. Like, oh, they'll pay for it. And turns out they're like, exactly. you, I like think it doesn't matter like if you had a million dollar board ape. It was just kind of like, yeah, fuck you. I'm not doing, spending three bucks a month on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's funny. <laughs> yeah, it didn't really go well with like the community, yeah. right? But I mean, you look, guys, I, I, something I, you have, have, I have to be grateful to, to, to Twitter, right? I mean, like our, you know, most of the ecosystem of crypto exists because of Twitter to a large extent, like from the perspective of community. Yeah. So, you know, they're trailblazers. I mean, it's, it's an incredible platform. Do I think that uh, it could be better? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, they got to get rid of the bots. Too. They have yeah. to get rid of the bots. Right. I, I get like, a lot of bots myself damn. these days. Yeah. And it's pretty wild. But, um, but yeah, that's something like, you know, Web3, I'm surprised. Like, there hasn't been. I know some people have tried. I know some, like, former Coinbase guys have left and tried. I forgot the, the name of it. The guys are, are working on Lens Protocol, which is, like, another, like, you know, uh, move on that. On, like, a Web3. What, yeah. what a Web3, like, social platform like Twitter could look mm -hmm. like, too. But, uh, yeah, it feels like we're a little bit of a ways away. It's hard to, like, get that that startup, like, velocity of, like, you know, it, these things only work because there's people on the platform. And how do you get the first people well, on the you platform? guys could do it. You guys have a community. Like, you have tens of thousands of, like, diehards right like you guys i know and like we're gonna leave here and he's like let's go do that and i know we well got like 50 well, who was the one that you said has the java experience yeah. i mean you guys have yeah, someone that has the experience that's all you yeah. that's all you <laughs> really need yeah, but yeah we'll yeah, tell just, crown like just, just make, just just make us the new twitter dude yeah but even yeah. like, like and i want to you know because the, the new big buzz right now is like ens domains i want to kind of yeah. see what you guys think about that too because yeah again that's something else right it could be dot ape domains too right like i would get a dot ape domain you know but what are your thoughts on like ens domains right now because I mean, they're just going through the roof right now. Yeah, I think it's very cool. Yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, it's kind of an NFT with, with innate utility. It's like, this is your domain. Uh, in the same way, it's interesting, like, though, that, for example, in crypto, we all use, like, .io and .xyz domains because, yeah. like, people are basically like, no, fuck that. I'm not going to pay that exorbitant price for the .com and, like, I'm going to make my own community here. Um but yeah, for a long time, the dot ETH has been like it's it's a status signal, and it's and it's just also like easier if you're trying to send somebody something like you can get to their mailbox that much easier. It's also like kind of like in a certain sense, it's like the truest form of like digital land, you know? Yeah, it's your little. That's your that's carving your, out your, your little plot. spot. You guys thought about it though, dot ape. I mean, is that something else that you know I could throw on? You know, no comment. No yeah. Comment. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that well, yeah, he's always just smiling the whole time. You said yeah. so many things, he just smiled. Well, because like, I can see, bro, these guys are geniuses, and they could. They is could, that one they thing you guys do, do? Is not like overpromise stuff and like kind of. Yeah, I, I don't like. I don't like setting expectations high. Yeah, I, I, that's like you I see that. It. I see that mistake happen a lot on in NFTs, and crypto in general, just the internet in general. People are like, oh, you know, it's gonna be the biggest baddest thing ever. Floor price is gonna go through the roof, and it's just like I don't do any of that shit. I don't talk about. I don't talk about price action. Yeah, I don't talk about expectations you know it's like because someone's what, just gonna if it doesn't go that way someone's just gonna screenshot you and, and send it back in your face and it's yeah just like, like we're no, always just, trying to be mindful of sort of like the the cringe factor you know and just like and, we, we're more like i don't know trying to like foot ourselves sometimes to manage correct expectations because like and that's why we can't talk about some things that we're working on because then people will, will get yeah. way too excited know, right, like people are going to interpret like the no pressure. comments and the smiles and they're going to think like oh they're doing this this and this and this it's like that might be true might be not true it's yeah. like i'm not saying we have shit. like a thousand ideas and we can only execute a certain amount of them we have like 75 the people you know it's like and we're, yeah we're building and scaling the company yeah. as fast as possible that takes time like we're in exponential growth right now yeah, right i mean yeah, like yeah. it's hard to get in the right people and build a company no, and sustain i feel that i mean we go through that same thing right when we're building we kind of don't don't really announce it until it's out. Yeah, and that's the we'll smart maybe way. tease it like with like. Yeah. I think with, uh, with with this flavor, like we were on the Snoop episode, and you know he was gonna talk about Doctor Bombay, and we're like, all right, cool. How do we connect? We show him this. So nice. when we did the Snoop episode back in April, we teased, but at the same time, like the other stuff that we're really building around our community, it's like just let us build it. You know, like no no distractions, just tunnel vision. Yeah. So like yeah, that's the same mentality we have as so, well. Someone asked this the other day. It was like the funniest fucking question. They were like. Uh, when you released Mutants, which was like, how much did the Mutants like ultimately go for? It was like $90 million or something? Yeah, or 70? Like, Somewhere yeah, between like 70 and $90 million. Yeah. And it was like, you know, it was like the biggest thing we'd ever done at that point. And, um, you know, and it was it was a very successful project and still is. And the when we launched it, someone was like, we, we basically announced it saying uh, the tweet was, fuck it, Mutant Saturday. And someone was like, oh, how did you decide it? Like, that was the time. Like, how, like, how long before 
did you decide that that was going to be the day? Like, how did you map that out on your roadmap and internally? And we we're like, what do you mean? And he's like, well, didn't you like come up with stats or data? And we're like, no, no, no. It was just like, we knew we were done Saturday. So we said, fuck it Saturday. You know, like, that was just <laughs> yeah, not everything's calculated. Yeah. Um, I think we got some food from Gecko. Dave Grutman, gotcha. the owner, has sent us. Thank you. Of Thank course. You. So All right. Oh, wow. Oh Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. What type of aioli? Uh, oh. aioli. Oh, okay. What do you guys suggest as far as security? Yeah. Like, I, I hold all mine on ledgers. Hardware wallets. Hardware wallets you yeah. know, everyone should have a ledger. Yeah. You know, that's probably the easiest one for people to set up and protect their for NFTs. Um, just a regular ledger, right? Like that regular thing. Yeah. Just called yeah. Ledger. You should never, you know, never ever type your seed phrase into your computer. There's no reason to do that ever. Don't do it. Write it down on a piece of paper or something. If you're more sophisticated, there's like these, you know, steel things that you can get it inscribed on, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. And you, people need to act with like a lot of suspicion. It's like anytime you're being asked to, to connect your wallet, that you should treat that the same as if like you're on, you know, Chase or Bank of America.com and like going to be approving a wire transfer. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it's giving access to assets in, in some of these scenarios. Someone told me, I, I don't remember if it was in New York or Miami, that like there's like robbers that like hang out outside of like, nft crypto parties and they just know like someone's gonna come out and they have their like metamask you know um or their coinbase wallet and they're like all right transfer right now like gunpoint like it's happening jesus that's horrible yeah it's, wow. it's great it's great i mean well, it's, it's a new it's, wave it used to be a watch now it's a fucking yeah. send me your nft yeah send me your eight <laughs> right. <laughs> right like send me your eight way that's, worth way more than a watch yeah it's crazy. um got some questions on apecoin um obviously it's doing very well you know I'm, you know bear market didn't help but it's picked back up recently i think like time of this interview is somewhere around 689 maybe seven bucks um it's a lot of pressure like with that like when it dips like do you look at that i know you don't look at floor price but do you look at the price of nope. eight point like nope. we're trying to play long term like you know here we, we're for everything that we're doing we're just focused about building utility and yeah. and access making things safer everything will figure itself out what else? Like, what do you think of when you think of a point? Like, you know, a lot of people hold it. A lot of, you know, the, the price is doing well. Yeah. So, yeah, just kind of curious. Like, what, what are your guys' thoughts? Or what do you, you know, what's the day look like when it, when a point comes, comes up? I mean, with everything that we do, like the hustle comes from, like, how do we just build? Like that, that's where, like, that's where we're focused. Like, no, we're not like freaking out about price on anything, but we are freaking out about how, like, hey, we have all these things we want to build. There's 75 people in the company. That's not enough. We need to be 120 by the end of the year. We need people in for this, that, or the other thing. Like, what is the next big, you know, how do we get more people onto other side as soon as possible? We had 5,000 people, 4,500 4, in the first trip. How do we double that for the next one? How do we, you know, get people building on top of it? How do we introduce more ways for people to, you know, transact? And when we do a merch drop, how do we have, you know, be able to have people buy and sell things with uh apecoin in an, in an is, easy is that something way, you guys are working way. on though like talking to like teams that like say like i don't know shopify or others to like integrate like we, we talk to everybody in, yep. in trying to you know for our specific needs of like you know when we did we did a merch drop um and we were accepting apecoin a few months ago and the platform that we were using for it you know the the that to accept apecoin kind of shit the bed immediately and uh you know and some of these things they'll work well for smaller, you know, of like a hundred people trying to use something in an hour. But like when we did a merch drop, it was, you know, thousands in like a minute. We were trying, mm -hmm. we were smashing this thing and, and some things aren't battle tested in that way. And so like, how do we just get the infrastructure and the tooling there so that it supports what we're trying to do? Yeah. I think we should start accepting on our site, fullsend.com. Yeah. Cool. Start accepting Apecoin. Let's go. So we're going to, we'll reach out. It's up, built on Shopify right now. If they can't help us, we might reach out to you guys. I think, Helping you guys make that a utility would be pretty cool. And our, you know, I know a lot of our fans. I've heard seen it on the Discord. They're all a lot of them are holders of Eight Point. They're all believers. Yeah, it's hey. awesome. Oh yeah. yeah. Something I'm kind of curious about, just kind of going back, is you guys stayed pretty quiet for a long time, right? About revealing yourselves behind the whole project. Well, yeah. I mean, what happened was uh, Buzzfeed, right? Buzzfeed. Yeah, I worked with a pretty malicious actor to dox us, and I think they were trying to come at it from the perspective of like, oh, you know. Uh, 
we think these guys are nefarious and they couldn't find anything nefarious on us. So then they were like, well, no one's allowed to be anonymous and run a business. Didn't mind that like all of our employees knew who we were, all of our partners knew who we were, you know, let's dox them. And so right before they dox us, we we're like, well, we'll fuck it, we'll own it. We'll put up a photo of ourselves, introduce ourselves to the community. Um, yeah. Was there any rationale behind like why you didn't want to like share it? Like, I mean, I think were? it's just like kind of part of the crypto ecosystem just to, you know, launch projects using a pseudonym. It was just kind of felt par for the course. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we always had an LLC. It was like not like that. Like right, the government somebody had an work. issue. There's a there's a legal right. entity that someone sure, okay. someone could take it up with. Um, so it wasn't like this. I yeah, kind of, who's to become, say you have to be like public? I yeah. just ask because the internet makes it a big deal where they're like. I think journalists made it a big deal, yeah. but like the actual community, like I don't know, is it really a big deal? Like, but anyway, people know who we are now, and it's like it's fine. And I'm yeah. like, honestly, it's become a blessing in a certain sense. That's what like, I was gonna say. Yeah, how's it cooler. changed? Well, I mean, like, because like we think about like the first Ape Fest where you threw, where, like I was anonymous at Ape Fest. No one knew who I was. You know, I'd walk around the crowd, and no one knew that like you know I'd helped create this whole thing. You know, yeah, wow. and it was kind of like magically. And it was like thousands of people, and I'm just like, and sometimes I'd see people from the community, and I'd like tap their head and be like, hey, I'm Gordon. You know, they'd be like, oh, we'd have a hug and talk or whatever. Uh, but this last, yeah, we Ape were just, Fest, I was out there like giving wristbands. Yeah, last we like, like, people thought. I I was an intern. I was like, hey, you know, you're <laughs> like, yeah, that, that was the job then, every day. It was yeah. just like hustle for people. And then this, but then like, okay, flash forward to this eight fest where we're like at Pier 17, maximum capacity, four nights in a row, 4,000 people a night. I couldn't even get everyone in every night because that's how high the demand was. And I walk outside of the, the area that I was hanging out in just to, you know, meet some people. And it was like a line formed of people just wanting to meet me. And I'm just like four hours a night, just shaking hands, kissing babies, meeting the community, people who are like, you know, I've been dying to meet for the year, past year and a half, you know? Uh, it was amazing. It was, like, extraordinary. Felt so, a little bit like Mickey Mouse, though, too. Yeah, like, a little like bit. At Disney World. I don't know. It was, it was fucking stoked. It was, like, yeah. I was fucking stoked because, like, the people who wanted to meet me almost entirely were people who were building in the space. They were utilizing the intellectual property. They were building their own projects. They wanted to talk. They, You know, I gave them my email. It's like, let's, you know, let's shoot the shit. Let's talk about, you know. So I have a, a large back catalog of emails I need to still get through. But, uh, um yeah, it was like, you know, a blessing and a curse in a certain sense, you know? Yeah. That's something that's really we, cool. We talked about the event that you guys threw last year, but we didn't talk yeah. about the one this past June. Yeah, it was wild. Yeah, you know, it was wild. Like, it was like know, Eminem. Dog, little Baby, Eminem. Eminem. Showcase, like, showcase, showcase like, the new video, which is like amazing. Bro. It was so good. Imagine going um, back like LCD 15 years ago. Eminem like bought one. Yeah, damn. Yeah. Imagine was, like telling yourself 15 years ago, like Eminem's going to be at your company's event. Like that's so It was crazy. unbelievable. It's yeah. ridiculous. It was so good. And they did the music video. And, and it was Eminem and Snoop. It was, you know. Yeah. I don't know if you've noticed, but they like me to ask the hard-hitting ones. So, we, obviously, there's been those accusations and shit behind, like, yeah. oh, these guys are racist, white supremacists, all that stuff. How did that even come about? And how do you respond to that? Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's been pretty crazy. I mean, like, you know, obviously, with all the attention that's been brought to the NFT space, there's, like, opportunists that come into it as well. And something that we saw, you know, early last fall was when, crypt, you know, CryptoPunks were, were on top. That was like the project that everybody was reaching for. They had the highest floor of anything. It was like, you know, it's the OG community. And uh, a troll started like attacking that community and, and, you know, got behind this project, you know, formed this project called Not Larva Labs. You know, punks were created by Larva Labs. This was Not Larva Labs. They were going to take punks, you know, remint them facing the other way and just kind of like needle at these people and and troll them and get attention and uh what happened was once apes took over punks you know that attention of like okay who's on top who do we got to take down turned to us and when somebody started minting an ape and facing it the other way we're like don't give them attention like just leave it be sure and then of course like the new opening was like oh what if we start up this conspiracy theory and that they're like secret neo-Nazis in this country because no one knew who we were. We just were anonymous people on the internet. Right. So if you're if you're really clever and you can do this shit, like it can get attention. And uh, <clears throat> what were they using as like evidence or like to push that narrative? I mean, it's kinds like, of it's like Alex Jones level shit. Like he could turn like this can into like seven degrees of Hitler, basically. <laughs> sure. I mean, like seriously, it's like yeah. what yeah, it like, get so down to. A journalist <laughs> yeah. wrongfully put at one point that our our project minted on april 30th as like the date which is apparently i guess the date that like hitler died which no i didn't know that neo-nazis celebrate the day that hitler died i don't think they actually do it's like sounds like an okay day but like uh that was like one of the things you know our we have one of like one of four of our logos they were saying look like this nazi logo that we've never seen before our Mm. logo looks like every fucking like 
It's a skull. Yeah, it's like sure. every yeah, and other like, logo and it's also like a like a really standard mock up, right? Like a it's lock like up of de- lock design. Up, right? yeah, it's like basically there's like basically like every motorcycle club patch in the history of the world basically has that similar lock up. And it's like and like I was looking the other day, like if you go to Whole Foods, you can just like look at logos around your town or like when you go shopping, it's like oh yeah, this is like a standard lock up, mock up, yeah. whatever. At the end yeah. of the day, you know, when you're as big as you guys are. Yeah, people are going to so use your a name. Target on your back. Guys, it's also just like that's the guy's a grifter, right? The guy's made like millions of dollars. Like that's the thing yeah. that like once people like understand, it's like, oh wait, he's made millions of dollars off this grift. Yeah. Like he's like he's incentivized to spread a conspiracy. It's basically, like, like, wait, a how, did he, how did he, how did he make money? the money? Because he creates knockoff NFTs. That's what he did for crypto punks and created crypto funks. And he would board API club. Oh, so and he he's the his, scammer. He's a scammer. It's the, that's all it is. It's like oh, the, the guy's literally he brags about. It. He's bragged about making millions of dollars off this shit. Right, and it's like you can go into, you can find image like uh, screenshots on his Discord yeah. where he like talks about he he's deserved. like, oh, he wants us to sue him, and it's like it's, it's like going to increase his cloud or whatever. It's all like fucking nonsense. Yeah, motherfucker doesn't. Even yeah, and it's like and it's attention. like and like point in case by the way, like you know, I was born a Jew, Cuban American. Our other two founders, uh, Turkish American, and the other one's Guatemalan Pakistani. And it's just like, give me a fucking break. You know, it's like like neo Nazis, Nazi. like get out of here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like ridiculous. <laughs> You're just using your name. Yeah. I mean, it happens. It goes with us, man. We yeah. get it too. Believe it or not, yeah. as much as people love us, people try to use our name all the time. We, you and I, could make a YouTube channel to, today <laughs> talking about Nelk boys suck, and this is why yeah. we'll get. It couple hundred thousand views you know a million views yeah. it's like you know just use the big guy's name and you're gonna get views and that's it's a sad they thing could about use the both internet. our names now happy dad and board eight. yeah they could yeah. say yeah. i mean yeah. Somebody, yeah. Right? yeah happy dad happy dad board eight milk boys suck and this is why and yeah. they're gonna get a couple hundred thousand views the, the nice thing is here it's it's actually well it's not nice but the, the thing the reality of the situation is it's a, such a small percentage mm-hmm. of people like it's like you got to be like below ged level of intelligence to read through his shit and be like oh like you know and I actually yeah. believe it, right? This sure. is straight up. He's like the Alex Jones of NFTs, basically. Yeah, got it. and that's what it's become. Do you give a fuck? Not anymore, I, to be honest. Yep. This guy deserves no attention, honestly. That's you got enough is. on the yeah. biggest podcast, yeah. you know, on YouTube right now. Like, yeah. fuck so that I'm guy. Sorry you got to come up, you know? Yeah. But well, I, sorry, I it, this guy brought it up. No, no, no. I'm I don't I know it, why. Like you know. all day, all week long, I got to bring it up. Yeah. So a lot of more <laughs> other things. Yeah. There's a lot of other things <laughs> to fucking talk fuck? about with these guys. He's throwing me under the bus right now. It's right. Not, not how <laughs> like, I gotta bring it up. I gotta bring it up. You guys know it's the vibe. Like, yeah. He's like, I'm, yeah, Jew- I I'm Jewish. Yeah. I can bring it up. No, no. Nah, but, but I appreciate but, it. But I, I mean, me personally, from my advice, you know, I've I've been in this business for a very long time. Worked with a lot of different people. Including, it'll go away. It'll yeah. go away. Don't bring, give it attention. My personal advice. Okay. Keep fucking building. Keep winning. The sure. best way to shut up a fucking yeah. Hater, yeah. Right? Just, no, just win. keep winning. Just winning. win. You know, and I think you guys stay focused. That guy just wants to be a distraction. He wants to see you guys come down. Like, uh, but all the stuff that we talked about in the last hour and a half until Steiny had to bring this shit up. Um, you know, like all the other stuff you guys are building. <laughs> you know, like people are not. No one's gonna remember about a stupid video on YouTube. Yeah. You know, I I I, 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 I watched like the first five minutes of it. I was like. All right, like I get where this guy's going. Like, yeah, when they got to the point where it was like, I don't even know if the video, but like someone like, reached out to me and they're like, "What about the Hawaiian shirts in the collection?" It's just like, what if Hawaiian shirts been like canceled for everybody now because like yeah. some dipshits wear them? It's like, yeah, yeah, and it's like you know? I don't know. There's so many different variables in the collection, so it's weird to see somebody like pull something out. They're like, oh yeah, the Hawaiian shirts. It's like, wait, okay. what are they saying about the Hawaiian shirts? Because like you know, like the fucking like boogaloo's, <laughs> or, like those alt right fucks. Who like wear them and like they're like, oh, I'm going out with my AR-15 because I'm a fucking idiot or whatever. Oh, yeah, you know, I don't know. It's, I don't know. Yeah. They're like, Hawaiians it's like okay, everyone. what about the like Maybe rainbow suspenders or like a wire or like I don't know. Like, I don't know. <laughs> no, yeah. I, I, I would. If he's I hating would, on Hawaiians, then you know he's just not cool. You know. Yeah. I mean, that thing was a couple months ago. I think to me, I even forgot about it. You know, I, I really. Yeah, yeah I, it, I, it doesn't pop up on our radar too much. I mean, it's like you guys are building some shit, man. Yeah. Like, let's do dot ape domains let's do platform now you know but but you know like the things that you guys are doing man it's like yeah, it's been crazy you. it's been like it was a, a crazy a year ago watching because uh, we never really wanted to be public people you know i mean it's like so yeah. now we're, we're thrust into it and it's like okay well you know but you guys are dope yeah it's, you guys are yeah, yeah. so much yeah. Yeah. But you guys are, i mean you guys are in showbiz with you and <laughs> an nft space and pop culture and music <laughs> you know you guys are on this show like you guys are you know, and you guys are in showbiz, you know, and it's like this shit's going to happen and I, you just have to ignore tunnel vision and just fucking keep doing what you're doing. Thank you, man. Yeah. I appreciate that advice. And I, yeah, I appreciate the situation. You know, it's like when you become a public person because you've done something, you know, kind of incredible. It's what we've been able to accomplish this past year. The good and the bad is going to come. You know, yeah. and it's like, you know, it's like uh, what do we say. It's like, you know, it's you always got to pay the devil the 10 percent. You know, it's like yeah. every step up. It's yeah. like I get that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, dude, yeah. you guys are the new wave of American dream. 
You were a publisher. What'd you do before this? Nothing. I was sick for like fucking 10 years. Yeah, I was like, I was going to go to grad insane, school and then I was like, oh, I'm in bed. And then like this idiot fucking contacts me. He's like, let's make an NFT. And I'm like, ha, ha, ha. you have no idea what's in store. What's the relationship like with um, Guy Siri? Speaking of GOAT. He's so it's incredible. incredible. Yeah. He's like the best partner we could have possibly asked for. Um, we're on the phone with this guy hours every day working on all kinds of things together. He's like probably the only person I've ever met in my life who will stay in the ring with me ideating, beating up an idea until the like you know wee hours in the morning yeah. um and i think Fuck he, you i do that with you all the time well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from the moment we sold out last year vcs were knocking at the door and like i don't know we didn't know shit about running a company let alone taking on venture capital we knew it from like watching silicon valley like the tv show and mm -hmm. stuff we're like no these guys are gonna find a way to screw us like we gotta just no 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 keep our heads down and so when we got introduced to Guy, we were we were like suspicious. We we're like, what's the deal here? I don't yeah. know. Like this guy's got, you know, he manages red hot chili peppers and Madonna and this stuff. Like he's not gonna have time for for us, really, is he? But as we got to know him more and more, it just was like, oh, like he's, you know, he he was really part of this in like ideating, beating up ideas, like, you know, and, and he has an incredible, I think it's probably from working with artists, he has an incredible maybe like bedside manner of like participating in the creative process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But also like you just, at a certain point you'd be like, no, we're just doing this. And he's like, okay. Like, he also, yeah. had to like earn his cred with us a little bit. I remember like the first time I met him, he was like, what are your favorite bands? And I was like, all right, Bad Brains and KRS One. They were like the first two bands I could think of. And one was like a old school hip hop artist. The other was like a DC hardcore band. And he goes, one second. And he just gets on his phone and he starts scrolling through it. And he shows him at like age 16 with KRS One in Brooklyn, like a photo of them arm in arm. And I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, he's and then around. he's like, and then another one. He's like, oh, and by the, and then he shows me with a photo of him in HR, lead singer of Bad Brains. And he's a fucking, uh, he was like, yeah, I put them back together for the reunion tour. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah. And I got off the phone and I was like, yep, bro. like he's coming in the building. Yeah, nice. like, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's the one thing about Guy. You know, uh, there's a lot of music managers out there. Um, he doesn't get fired. You know, like there's no, <laughs> I used to work with this person. Like it's everyone's like, I've worked with them for a very, very long yeah. time. Like people don't fire Guy Osiri. Like yeah. he's just like, yeah, good, he's got good. these like 30 year relationships. And, and yeah, that's incredible. And a, yeah, he's he's a, it's, a, it's a testament to his character. He's a yeah, truly he's a good, 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 good human. Yeah, and the more he's people I meet, the more people have kind of the exact story that you have here, which yeah. is that like he's just a genuinely great person. Yeah. yeah. Any anything well, changed for you guys uh, with the lifestyle, all that? We bought Pelotons like immediately. That was like the one thing. I know that sounds ridiculous considering the, the Pelotons. Ability, yeah, like you know, the, the bicycles. Okay. <laughs> That's the biggest purchase. Well, no, 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 I mean that was, that was like the first. Yeah. Thing. What's up? <laughs> Come on. Give me something juicy. I know, I know you guys are. I know that's not juicy, but that really was. The you pulled first up thing in a Rari. I saw you. A what? Ferrari. He no, 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 that was you. Oh, okay. I, was, I took an Uber, bro. Come on. I took an Uber too, by the way. <laughs> For our it's our nice. have, you guys made, have you guys made any big purchases or anything like that? I know you got I the modest. I was living in like a basically like a studio apartment before, um, so I bought a new home. I did yeah, we moved, but like I don't. Yeah, know, it took me a while to get to that though, because like, again, like course. we work a lot. It's, yeah, it's yeah. Like, this is yeah. like the first time out of the house I've been in a while. You know, I think um, like yeah, like you know, four or five months in. We bought like Pelotons. That was the thing. And we're like, yeah, we're all going to get shape. We're going to be like on fucking calls, like just riding a bike. That's what we're doing. And then like two weeks later, it was like, this is just like a coat rack, you know, yeah. in the living room. I, I saw this great dust. line the other day that was like, you know, when I was poor, I had all this time, you know, uh, that I could have spent money, you know. Uh, but now that I'm not so poor, I don't have much time to spend mm. money. So I really, it's not really about, you know, what we're buying. It's just about like what we're, where our attention is. And our attention is just like heads down constantly. I think like it's Uber cool. Eats is where I spent all my money. <laughs> Mostly. Like Uber it's just like yeah. smash that priority I brought an infrared sauna. That was like oh, a very bro, exciting. Game okay. changer. That's a good purchase. Yeah, oh, I yeah. buy like a, one of those like cold immersion tubs. Dude, yeah. yeah. I'm like kind of nerdy with like the alternative huge. health stuff. Game changer. Yeah, it's amazing. every day. My girlfriend yeah. and I like, we're just like He goes hard on the alternative health stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's huge. Well, nice. Congrats on the sauna. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I think we're good, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're good. Congratulations, so, guys. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, so much. Congrats, nice. congrats on this. This is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Congrats on all the success you've been having. Thank you. You guys are absolutely We need young. you guys to pick up meta cards yourselves. Yeah. yeah. We're, okay. we're, we're, we're sure. you know, we'll, we'll send Let's you a link it. to that. Or you can find it on OpenSea. Yeah. 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 But no, we appreciate it. I mean, we've been we've been wanting to get them on for time. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys have really inspired us. I appreciate everything you guys have done. It's awesome to just sit down. It's the best part of the podcast. You get to sit down with people like you and just learn and it's awesome. Yeah, thank I you really guys. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank you guys. Yeah, All right, thank guys. you guys. Cheers. Thanks, guys.